So if we read the question, we know we have a 100 acre suburban development that has the following land use data as shown below. So we have the land use data and the total precipitation is assumed to be four inches. We're given the total rainfall of four inches and using the NRC as curve number method, the runoff in inches from the residential lots only is most nearly what? residential lots only so we're looking at these only meaning we're only going to consider these so we could calculate for the other ones but this one they want us only to determine the runoff in inches for the residential lots only so in the data we're given the land use we're given the percentage of the land the percentage of the 100 acres this means these residential lots covers about 40% of 100. So it's just gonna be 40 acres. That's specified for the residential lots. That's the area that we need for the resi residential lots, which is essentially just 40 acres for 40% of 100. And we're given this curve number for each, well, this depends on the hydraulic soil group. And this is usually given in a table format in our books or specific tables we use but this is given to us this curve number for our residential lots we're also given these for the condominiums commercial areas and open space or grass cover you see how this is the lowest for this one for the curve number but what we're going to use for this question is going to be this curve number because once again we're told to determine just for the residential lots so what's actually happening here if i draw a picture let's say this is our total acreage so let's say we have that this is the 100 acres here 100 acres and we're gonna say about 40 percent of this is gonna be for residential lots so let's say about 40 percent here is reddit residential and it's gonna be around so 40 percent 100 is 40 acres as stated so we know that and about one so 20 percent if we look at this number is gonna be for the especially condominiums so let's say this is for the condominiums then you have 20 25 percent for the commercial area so let's say this is the commercial area this is condominiums and the last one is going to be just grass cover so we just have grass here which is going to be around 15%, right? This number. So that's what's actually happening here. And we're looking at this 100 acre. But we're only going to determine the runoff Q. So I'll use red for Q. The runoff Q for the, from the residential lots. So we need this value for Q. And this will help us size our drainage structures, right? Let's say we have a street on the side and it will have some drainage structures and we will size the these structures specifically using this q value that's why we need this q runoff value from the residential lots only for this question so let's solve for that using that scs method and the scs method we can look in the civil engineering section so if you look and go all the way down, this is geotech, this is structural, and we will go to the water resources, which is gonna be this hydrology and water resources. So we're gonna use this method, and we're gonna determine our, we know the curve number value is going to be 83, with that value, we can determine our S, our S value, which is the maximum basin retention. With that value, we can move on to determine our Q value. We plug in S and P is given, right? P is the precipitation given to be four inches. So that's all we have to do here is just simply use these equations. And it's handy because they give us the curve number. If they didn't, we could have arrived at the curve number if they were giving us our S value. But here they give us the curve number. 
So we're going to solve for S, then solve for Q, which is what we want at the end. So let's do that. Let's first find S. So if I write the equation, we know S is going to equal to 100, 1000, sorry. We take the curve number, minus 10. So S, the basin size, excuse me, 1000. The curve number is going to be 83. So we use 83, which was this for residential, minus 10. So solving for S, I got around 2.048 inches. So we have our S value. With the S value, now we can solve for Q, which is what we want to find the runoff in inches. So Q, using the equation from the handbook, is going to equal to P minus 0 0.2 s squared don't forget to square this divided by p plus 0 0.8 times s so we plug in our p value which is given in the question to be four inches it's right here our precipitation is four inches so this is going to be four minus 0 0.2 our s value we just determined it's 2.048 inches and don't forget to square all of that in parentheses divided by our p value which is the four inches plus 0 0.8 and we multiply by the s value which is 2.048 inches so now we can do the math for all of this and solve for q and I got around 2.29 inches. So this is going to be our answer for the runoff just for what? Just for the residential lots. That's the runoff. So we could, if you choose to, I recommend you do this just to practice. Do this for the 1 8 acre condominiums, 20% of the land. Then we have commercial area, which is 25%. And you're given all the curve numbers for this specific soil group, group C. So you could solve for Q for those, but this question asks us specifically for the residential lots. And one last thing I want to add to this is we could solve for the volume. So we know we have 40 acres, right? We know it's 40 acres because 40% 40 of 100 of the total acreage, we have 40 acres for the residential. So we can simply take the 40 acres times this value and we can arrive at a volume. So we can arrive at a volume, but we have to be careful with the units here. So essentially the total discharge, we are going to take our 40 acres times the 2.29 inches but notice here how the units don't match so we have to convert acres to i would convert that to feet first to so to feet squared and we can do this this is a very common conversion that i remember using a lot in water resources it's going to be you're going from acres to square feet right so you just multiply by 43,560. we convert to square feet then convert to inches so that's what we will do. So what the volume is going to equal, which is the discharge, we take 40 acres. So we know one acre is going to be 43, 560 feet squared, square foot. Then we convert the square foot to inches because this is in inches. And actually, what I want to do is convert this to feet to the third. It makes more sense. So what we did here is fine. So we have square feet, and we just converted the acres to feet squared. Let's convert this inches to feet. 
So we know that's 12 inches in one foot. All we have to do is gonna take this and multiply by 2.29 inches. And we know there's 12 inches in one foot. So these cancel, these cancel. So we have feet squared times foot. You solve for the volume and you should get around 33,019. Five two. It's going to be cubic foot. So this would be the volume if we were asked for that. But this is going to be our answer for this question. So it's 2.29 and it should be C. So that's all. Let me know if that made sense and if you have questions. Take care.